joining me this weekend. I am so excited today to bring you a special guest that I have with me today. None other than the infamous, or shall I say famous, David England, who is known internationally and nationally, locally. He is not only a, a successful photographer, but also I can call him friend. And I want you to join me as we discuss a picture is worth a thousand words. David, thank you for joining me today. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. For my fans and for my new listeners, I want you to know David is one of the best in the business. I had met David uh, when I was deciding to get married. I am a late bloomer when it comes to marriage. And he has been my personal photographer for everything since. So I'm glad to have him as a guest and for him to share his story with us, how he started, and also to inspire those of you that may be looking to go into the area of photography or just going after your goals. So David, talk to us today about how did you get started in the area of photography? Yeah, it's always a, it was an interesting story. I was 21 when I had the my first experience to go to a wedding. I'd never been to a wedding before and I was a guest and I was really curious to know like, what does a photographer do? What does a videographer do? What does the efficient do? It was all new to me. And as I watched the wedding happen, I just paid attention to where the photographer at was at, where the angles he was shooting was at, um, and just the flow of it. Um, when the wedding was over, I, I noticed how he put people together in group shots. And I noticed how he did the romantic shots as well. Um, the shots were just the, uh, the bride and the groom. And it was really interesting to see him move and work. Um, I remember him being frustrated a lot. You know, people mm -hmm. were in the background. He wasn't getting the kind of looks that he was getting. And when his energy went down, the couple smiles and their energy went down. Mm -hmm. So when he was done with that shoot, I borrowed my friends. I'm like, hey, can I take a few photos of my little camera? Mm -hmm. And um, they're like, sure, you got five minutes. So I went to work, not knowing what to do. I was pressing the buttons and posing them and moving them. And I got home, I looked at the photos and I was like, damn, I'm, this is pretty good. This is considering <laughs> like I got a little camera. Uh -huh. I'm wondering like maybe, maybe I can do something like this as well. Uh -huh. So a few days later, I sent the images to my friends and they were blown away. Wow. They loved my images more so than their professional photographer's images, and mine was free, you know? So that jump started me into the wedding industry by happenstance. Wow, so you've been now doing this for how many years? 2020 makes 20 years. So I've been in for a while. Congratulations on your 20th year. I've been year. in the game. Thank you, thank you. It's been fun. Every year brings a new challenge and new opportunities. Mm -hmm including in the COVID times. There's yes. been some interesting things that have happened in the wedding industry as a whole that has uh, made me change my, my, my thinking process of current clients, potential clients, and future clients, how Talk to address them. a little bit them. about that because this impacted everyone. I'm sure in your industry, it had a tremendous impact, at least initially. Oh, absolutely. Um, I can say personally, most of my weddings from February up until November are postponed or canceled altogether. Okay. Um, many of my clients have lost their jobs. Um, they're working on limited incomes. The venues themselves have closed. So if there's no place to get married, they just won't get married. Um, many courthouses in February, March, and April, they stopped issuing marriage licenses. So in the wedding industry, we had to get really creative on how we can service our customers and to make sure that, you know, neither party got the short end of the stick, so. I like how you said that because in this COVID time, and I've talked about it on previous episodes, even though some things close down, it's also an opportunity to reinvent yourself, or like yeah. you said, reset and go into a different direction. So you had to look at 
how you were currently doing business and rechange your business model or yeah, strategy in order to, to meet the current demands, right? And still life got to go on. Blow it up and start all over again. Excellent. And I did to, to decide on, you know, where am I going in photography for 2020? And a lot of it is contactless. Um, in the area where people are losing their jobs, it's important for people to update their pictures on LinkedIn and Facebook and, you know, so headshot photography came really big for me in this era. Weddings wow. are still busy, but my biggest problem and my biggest concern on booking clients going forward in 2020 is whether or not the venue will be open based off where we are in America with COVID. So clients for 2021 are starting to book and they're a little bit hesitant, mm -hmm. but um, we'll make it work for them. You know, yes. I'm not, I'm, I'm here in the long run. You know, I've been here for 20 years. I plan to be here for at least another 40. So you got the book 20 years ago by just attending a wedding. What made you decide to become an entrepreneur and start your own business? Because many times people see something and say, hey, that's great, I think I can do that. Or they've been working for someone else and even though they have the skill, they're afraid to make the jump. So what did it for you and what can you encourage people that may be looking to start their own business? Yeah, so I was very fortunate enough to get a push from a very close friend. Her name is Lola, Lola Kent, weddingsandevents.com. Check her out. Okay. She loved my images. And um, she says, you know, I can get you a job taking pictures, you know? And I'm like, wait, I'm going to college right now and I totally need something part-time where I can focus just on school. Mm -hmm. And so the first job, she gave me an address and says, go here. And I show up and it's a wedding. Now, I've never, actually shot a wedding. I, I still didn't know like the formalities of a wedding because mm -hmm. I've only been to one. Mm -hmm. But she gave me that push and started me off and I realized, you know, this can be my avenue for my fun money. Mm -hmm. This can be my avenue for my technology money because I'm a technology geek. I love all things technology. Mm -hmm. And um, I had two full-time jobs and I was still going to school, but every time I finish my regular job and I get back into the editing process and I'd see like the magic happen in front of my screen. It just re-solidified that maybe I should look into this a little bit more. So it didn't start off initially with mm, you going into your own business? Not at all. It was my crutch. You know, my, my foundation was my core jobs and my fun money and my enjoyment was photography. And more and more I started booking and less and less I needed my full -top time job. Um, I, I got to the point where I had to make a decision. I could be a photographer full time and I could risk it all, but I can invest on myself and my dreams and my goals, or I could work for the man or work for corporate America and hope that I don't get cut during the next recession. So I went all in, started my own business, quit my jobs, and I'm still here. I'm super happy. 20 years later. 20 years later. And that's what I try to tell people. I mean, sometimes you have to take that leap of faith but you have to bet on you. Yeah. Oftentimes we bet on other people or champion other people's vision or cheerlead them on and you can do it, you can do it. And when it comes to us, we're like, well, yeah. I don't wanna do it I, or because of this or that. So I know in 20 years, probably in the beginning for sure, you probably had some challenges. Talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about that because it's never easy. Everybody see it when it arrived, but you have to go through those challenges that build you character and build sure. strength and build the foundation um, sure. that you're laying. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I would say the first seven or eight years of my business, I was just a one man shop. Like you hired me and that's it. But I found myself hitting a ceiling when it came to um, getting inspiration from other styles of photography, collaborating with other people. As a wedding photographer, if you work by yourself, you're behind the computer 10 to 12 hours a day and it's a quite lonely place. So there was no water cooler talk. You know, there was no getting out and doing lunch with friends because this is your job. Mm -hmm. You know, while you're at home, everyone's doing their job at yeah. work. So mm -hmm. it became very lonely. And so I decided to hire on a second photographer and it just expanded my business. It expanded my uh, concept of photography and it changed my style of photography. I would say over the first 16 or so odd years, my biggest challenge as a photographer, as an entrepreneur and as an independent person was to find my family. Mm -hmm. You know, In our industry, we have lots of frenemies. We have people that want to be your friends, but are talking behind your back. Listen, now you're going to start preaching now. 
<laughs> it's in every you. industry. That is so true. Oh. How do you navigate <sighs> that? Because we need to talk to people and understand that exists. It, it really exists in every field. It does. It exists in every field and you have to be positive and you've got to move forward. You've got to smile and you've got to treat every friend as a friend, not an enemy and not competition. Yeah. I spent many, many years referring business out when I was double booked to other vendors, other friends. But that energy, that goodness, that goodwill never came back to me. Mm -hmm. And it was uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you know. I'm putting the energy out, I'm helping other small businesses, mm -hmm. and then it just never goes forward. Mm -hmm. You meet and network with other people in the industry and somehow they've got their own clique, they've got mm -hmm. their own friends, they've got yes. their own referrals. And I was a loner, I was a lone person, like mm -hmm. a lone wolf. Um, and I was okay with that, but I know I needed more. And in about 2017, I started, you know, if I'm not gonna fit in any group, I need to make my own family. Mm -hmm. I need to make my own foundation of people who I can trust, who has my back, and people who have my back as mm -hmm. well. So luckily I partnered with some amazing photographers. A few that just to name off the top is uh, Hitch Photography. They are mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. Barry and Dippin's fantastic with not only video work, they're talented in photography work, maternity shoots, real estate shoots, they do drone work. I mean, they are a photo booth. They're a one-stop shop. Mm -hmm. and, um, what amazes me the most is they have my back at all times. And I feel mm -hmm. like, although I never fit that industry standard, I've got my own foundation and I've got my own family where we work with each other and we're, we're truly a family. Excellent. Yeah. So what inspires you to keep going 20 years later? What gives you that inspiration to continue to expand and continue to go after this? Obviously, when you look at things that you shoot, there's beauty and People, you shoot uh, landmarks and artifacts and abstracts, and there's so much beauty in pictures. Pictures, that's why I said pictures is worth a thousand words, and how you can put them together. But what brings you that inspiration that when you go to a set or you have a client that you draw on to bring that magic together? Well, I think it's twofold. The first and a little backstory about me, I've never been the one to have like a compass or a roadmap on life. Mm -hmm. And it's okay not to, mm -hmm. you know, I started my business. I didn't even know I wanted this business, but um, be open to the universe, make the initial plan to do something and then allow the universe to bring you where you need to be at that moment. Mm -hmm. And every year in photography has brought me new opportunities. You know, I've flown all over the world with photography. Yes. I photograph celebrities. Mm -hmm. I photograph for our mayor in Long Beach. I mean. The list can go on and on with all the Fortune 500 companies that I've worked with, but being available, putting your energy out there that you want something is, is step one. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, step two is like, you know, goals and visions. And although I have a general idea of what I want, I don't be too, I'm not too specific on what I want. Mm -hmm. For example, 2019, I told myself, I would love to work more local. Mm -hmm. Most of my business as a wedding photographer is either in Laguna Beach, or in North Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I'm in Long Beach, I'm in the middle, but after living here for 24 years, I could not get my foot in my own city. Mm. So I put the energy out in the universe, to God, to the universe, to whoever was listening. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna work more local. I wanna build more foundations. In 2019, I accomplished that. 2020, my goal in the universe was I would love to travel more for work. And I just got back from a photo shoot, uh, a wedding in last month in Utah. And I just booked another wedding in Texas for next year. So putting your, your information out and putting your, your thought out into the universe and what you want is a great way for you to just be inspired, see new things, imagine new things, enjoy new people. And it starts with a vision. It yeah. literally, you had a vision as what I'm interpreting from you is that this is what I want. Yeah. to happen and keeping that whether it's on a, I tell people you know write it down write the vision down Absolutely. because sometimes you need to write and remind you when road looks a little rocky or challenges is there but you had that vision and now you're living and manifesting that which you spoke about from 2019 and going into 2020 and beyond I'm yeah. sure so what are what's something that was like you photographed maybe thousands and thousands of pictures all over, but what was something that had such an impact on you or sentimental 
takeaway out of millions of things? If you were to name one thing, what would that be? So in 2018, I had the privilege of meeting Robert Friend. Um, in 2018, he was one of 13 men who are still alive from the Tuskegee Air Force in World really? War II. I was hired by a company to do an interview with him and to photograph him throughout the day. And the stories he told me and the challenge that he faced back during the World War II times during segregation and non-integration and where the world was, it made me pinch myself because although as an African-American, we still have struggles in 2020. Yes. But to know what he did back in the day and how he overcame all of his obstacles, um, especially being in the Air Force that was basically sent out first, you know, usually got shot down, usually was the one, you know, the front lineman. You know, he was one of very few people who actually made it through and his story and spending time with them, he was, you know, a national treasure. Yes. And I'm so thankful that photography brought me to this man that could tell me what it was like to be, to live in the 1920s, what World War II was like as African American and as a military person. Rich. Yeah. I bet that was an amazing yeah. interview. We're gonna have to have you give us that for Oh, wow. So yeah, I made the front cover of the magazine that highlighted him, which was fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Wonderful. Oh my goodness. So, talk to me about what are some of the tips that you could give someone that's interested in living your life without limits. I always reiterate that it's about motivating and empowering people to follow their goals and put themselves first. Because for many, many years, I personally, before launching this, mm -hmm. gave all my energy out to everybody else and I was in the background. And even in leadership roles, I would leave depleted. And after I accomplished the corporate goals and sure. all the employees reached their goals, it was nothing for me. So uh, on this show, we want people to focus on reaching their goals and accomplishing what they set out for themselves. So what are some strategies or helpful tips that you can give our listening audience and our viewers uh, on how to keep going forward, even in these trying times, whether they're interested in photography or not. Yeah, well, your backstory sounds like me. I've always been the person to put myself last. I've always been the person to make sure that everyone else was taken care of, and I've always been the fixer. And it wasn't until I hit my 30s that I realized that I was the reason why people were not growing. I was the reason why people couldn't figure things out for themselves because I would always handle it. Made it a crutch for him. Yeah, and for me guilty, too. Guilty, guilty. <laughs> right? I've been guilty. a crutch for a lot of people. Yes, and, yes. And um, once I, re it took me 35 years to figure it out. I can't be that person because my energy goes to them, but I'm not focusing on myself. Mm -hmm. So first step, if you are that person who becomes a crutch for other people, figure out a way to allow them to work for themselves or allow them to fix their own problems give them a guideline, help them be self-sufficient mm -hmm. if they're worth your time. Yes. Right? Yes, yes. If they're yes. not worth your time, you gotta cut them out of your life. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Second step, invest in yourself. Spend some time learning. I grew up in the area where there wasn't YouTube. I couldn't Google how to take pictures. I, you know, I can go to the library, mm -hmm. get some books, but it's all trial and error. So mm -hmm. invest some time, look at YouTube. There's tons of resources that are free to start you know, photography businesses or any business that you want. Mm -hmm. Mentorship is super important. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it and I probably should have, mm -hmm. but if you have an opportunity, whether it's in the photography industry or if it's in another industry, try to find a friend that you can tag along with and learn to see if it's something that you'd like. Mm -hmm. You know, service is free. Yes. Offer your services for free in exchange for an education. Yes. If you can go down that right, you can, you'll definitely know if you want to move forward, or if you want to change lanes and try something else. Excellent, well said. I think that we're in a time now where so much is changing in the world and we want people to stay focused mm -hmm. because you can't control everything that's going on throughout the world, whether you're in the United States or wherever else you may be living, but you can control your response and the things within your life to put yourself in a better position. 
And I love how you added on removing the crutch because sometimes we can be great at being a support system, but we don't want to be an enabler. Yes. And many times we've all been guilty of that. I'll put it on me, where you enable a person that if you just step away, still cheer them on mm -hmm. and encourage them, they will begin to reach where they need to reach. Yeah. And we can all celebrate at the same time. That's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. David, thank you so much for your time today and what you bring to the industry and in creating magic every time you step behind the lens. Not only have you been a blessing to me personally and my family through the images, through my wedding that we still look at today and fall in love all over again, uh, but to all the many lives that you've touched throughout your career and will continue to touch. If there was one final word you want to leave our listening audience today before I do closing remarks, what would that be? Oh, put me on. You put me on. <laughs> one final word for your audience. Mm. Believe in yourself. Yes. Invest in yourself. Yes. And love yourself. Give me some. There you have it, family. Believe in yourself, love yourself, and invest in yourself. You are worth the money. You are worth your time. And this is the season that you must take advantage of and put you first. Remember to love yourself, take care of yourself. Thank you for continuing to support us we're now over 3,000 subscribers at Living Your Life Without Limits and continuing to grow. We're continuing to bring you information that will empower you, inform you, and hopefully inspire you. Log on and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay connected. And remember, we're just getting started. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks for joining us here at Living Your Life Without Limits with your host, Shannon Jackson. You always know she always brings you quality content all the time with each and every episode she creates, and that is just for you. You know, Shannon has done her part. Now's the time for you to do yours. You need to take action. Show her your love. Click on that subscribe button and get your content every single week.